Okay, so what we did was we made a uh, augmented reality game using the DE2 FPGA. Um, so what we have here is we have edge detection. Off of video. Off, yeah, in real time off of video. So there's... Uh, with this camera, and it's taking, it's taking a video of the board over there. <clears throat> I see. So you, you just freehand drew a, uh, a map on the board. Exactly. And then you're using uh, edge detection and other techniques to convert that into a line image that you can then use as a maze. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you can draw like any kind of map just in a matter of seconds. Yeah. Very cool. And then you're using you're using buttons on the FPGA to, to add a little impulse to the ball. And so the game here is to get the ball out of the maze in the to the left in the minimum number of impulses. That's right. Oh, 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 so close. Oh, oh, oh. oh okay, I got he was robbed. I'm gonna get this time. Yeah, all right. And that's the way for condition. So and we display that. So I used five impulses that time. So and that's the one message. So the minimum I've seen you do is two. That's right. Yeah. And and this, yeah. I can try to this, reproduce that for this maze, right? And yeah. and of course you can. Uh, oh, we, not that time. Why don't we try? It? Reconfiguring the map. Okay, so that's a good idea. So that's so. Go right ahead now. Yeah. So draw. It. Maybe cut, cut off some some sight lines. Oh, that's gonna be hard. Oh, evil. Okay, out. do one more line so I can see your hand on the screen over here. Okay. Okay, very good. Now, so that becomes me instantly the new maze. Yep. Okay, let's see. Let's start off with that direction. Oh. It's definitely harder now. Oh. Uh, yeah, you're, you, can't, you can't do that. <laughs> You're in the way of you're, you're, you're no. cutting the video here. Let's see. Oh, so close. Head down. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I got it. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. And how many go. was that? Nineteen. 19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a much harder maze. Yeah. And down in the corner, point to the little icon down in the corner. That tells you what direction you're shooting. Yeah, this is how you know what uh, what direction you're impulse. So you have a vector impulse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very cool. So, what's the hard part here? The hard part is getting the the lines thick enough and 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 the and the noise low enough so that you can get reliable bounces, right? Yes. Exactly. Yes. We spent the first around three weeks just getting really clean, robust edge detection going, and then we'll like adding. A more robust Gaussian filter than we had before, and mm -hmm. a time averager. So, what are you doing to make those lines clean? You're Gaussian filtering. Yeah, You're so we do a Gaussian filter. Five by five. <clears throat> five a, a five by five Gaussian filter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then we also do a time averager because we. One of the biggest problems that we had was the video coming from the camera and the decoder was flickering a bunch, and it was just causing everything to to fall apart. Uh, but these flickers only lasted like one frame. So what we did is we, we said if there's an edge in two consecutive frames, then that's a real edge. Otherwise, throw it away. And that, that got rid of a lot of noise and a lot of flickering. So that's sort of like a time median kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Interesting. We also so, got interesting effects with uh, just light. It's called specular reflection. And adding a bigger uh, Gaussian kernel, 5x5 five five, rather than 3x3, three three, uh, eliminates that from the... Yeah, we can actually activate the... So that's, well, that's what that so we added a, a debug switch, but basically this is what happens with specular reflection. I see. So those are, that's a, that's the reflections of the lights in the ceiling off of the board. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you actually see those uh, the, the the shadow. There's no shadow or anything that you can see with your naked eyes, but it, doing the image processing creates that effect. Yeah. And so and so now turn off the switch again and and what and what did you do? What did that add? We applied the filters. That okay. Described. All right. And that completely suppresses it. Mm -hmm. yep. Very nice. We can also uh, show the effect of Changing increasing the threshold. threshold. 
right. for edge detection, so yeah. we can increase the threshold. Try to eliminate some of the specs. You know? uh -huh. Then the only consequence is you might lose some of the lines. I see. So you might have to go back and thicken the lines with uh, exactly. a marker if you yeah. increase the if threshold. If we go too low threshold, we get too much noise. Then right. again, it depends on the application. So if you want to actually show someone's face or get a little lap, then a lower threshold might actually give you more detail. Yeah. Right. Okay, so put your face in there. Let's see what you look like. <laughs> Matt, go. Do your face. Okay. So, so let's get the threshold down a little bit. Oh, that's that's a that's an evil looking face. The, the eyeballs really stick out. <laughs> okay, give me a different threshold now. All right, let's go up a little bit. So you okay. can't really see all the features, yeah. but you can still see like the outlines. Right. So it, it really depends on the application. Yeah. If you want to see details, uh, you probably aren't going to want to use edge detection anyway. Right. You're going to do something else. Yeah. Okay. But, all right. Thank or you. Or you could use another kind of edge detection that gives you a wider range of details, the like right. filter. Right. Okay.